Hi there and welcome to this new tutorial. Today we're going to be using uh, a cross hatching technique to sketch a boat on the water. So join me for a sketch along. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and please don't forget to like and subscribe. It uh, really helps this channel a lot and it doesn't cost you a penny. Okay, thanks very much. So what I'm, I'm going to do is uh, we're just going to have a little look at the reference picture here. So one of the things that is worth noticing is the um, waves are all pretty similar sort of sizes. Now obviously back here they look quite small. <laughs> That's because, no surprise, they are further away. Now as you get quite close up here, the waves become bigger because they're closer. Now that effect will get more and more pronounced the lower you are to the water. So if you're in a little rowing boat quite low here, the waves that were directly in front of you would obviously look quite big. So it's worth noting that the further they get back, uh, they the smaller they get. And also, if you look at them, they're not quite as um, uh, contrasty. See here, they're quite blue. Here, quite blue or dark. And then as we get further back, they get more and more subtle in terms of the, the, the colour. The tone of a wave here is quite interesting. If you were to take that value there against this value here, say, so that value against this white value, you can see there's quite a big difference there in colours. Um, I've just realised this is waterproof ink so I shouldn't be drawing on this tablet but anyway um, and there's a gradient between those tones so here you have a kind of a, a lovely soft transition but for the sake of sketching we won't we won't really think about that gradient so much what we're going to do is we're going to going to refine that into more of a binary um, arrangement now here so I want you to look at the shape of the reflection here. Now the waves are obviously moving and distorting, so like a mirror that was bending and distorting, it distorts the uh, the reflection. So this is basically a reflection of the boat, and you can see it's lighter on this side, but it's uh, darker on that side. And these reflections run like this with blobs. So look look out for those blobs. And that's it really. I just wanted to, to sort of notice those things before we start this drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the boat pretty central, which I know isn't, from a compositional point of view, isn't great. Um, and I'm actually going to put something under here because I'm getting pretty tired of when I do drawings for YouTube of them looking basically fine from my viewpoint, but then when I look at them flat, they're distorted because what I'm doing is I'm effectively drawing them tilted over. Anyway, so I'm just going to prop this up so I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so we've got the drawing here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just drop this boat in. So I'm going to put the boat pretty central. Um, a couple of dots, just to make sure it's sort of central. There we go. So I'm going to start with the back. And now I'm not going to be too um, precious about this. Uh, there's some there's some rope and stuff here. I don't necessarily want to show that. Now, so we've got a line that comes around. What I do sometimes is I will draw it on here, like literally draw the line in like that. And that gives you a feeling for its shape. Now I know that I know that this distance from here to here, about a quarter of that is the distance between there and there. So a quarter of this would be that. So that means the bow is going to be about there. And I know that because I've drawn it on here that it comes out quite a sharp corner and then turns back and that actually is quite flat so I can put that flat bit in and then put that corner in there like that and I can do the same with that side 
Now if I'm worried about symmetry, I can put in a couple of lines to help. Uh, like that, and then we're going to have Uh, I've got a bit of a cold still. So we're going to have a fender here. A fender here and then this fender actually... Covers that and then there's another one. Uh, There, and then we're gonna have another fender. Fenders basically like bumpers for boats, these, and they just stop the boat from rubbing against things and damaging the paintwork and stuff like that. And obviously, the bigger the boat, the bigger the fender. And some of the ones you see on ships are massive, right. So what we've got is we've got the back seat in here. It's probably a bit high, but it doesn't matter. There we go. There's a bit of wood down there. So that's basically the inside of the boat done, really. There's some other features like oars and uh, rollocks, uh, holes for the oars. We're going to leave it at that. Now we do have a... Uh, a bow coming down here, which I'm just going to very, and there's also some rope, which I might just put in there. Now I'm going to just put some lines on here. Now they're going to get dots smaller and smaller and smaller as they go back. And that is just hinting at the form and the construction of the rope there. So the only other thing really I need to do is put these sides of the boat in here. Uh, and again trying to have some symmetry in there. Okay, so that's very roughly a rowing boat. It's not the best sketch, but it doesn't matter. I think it works quite well for what we're trying to do. It looks a little bit like a, it looks a bit circular, but anyway. So then let's start working on the water. So we know the water towards the back is, um, oh, actually before I do that, uh, I want to talk a little bit about mark making here. So there is a million different ways that you can you can draw water. Um, but one of the things that I feel is, particularly if you look at areas such as this here, um, look at these shapes. So what these are doing is these are sort of doing that sort of thing. Okay. Now if the water is choppier, now if you have a breeze over the water, what the waves can be smaller and they can actually be more pointy. So what you would get is you'd get something more like this. Now if the waves were smaller again and uh, again being pushed along quite fast, what you can get is literally them looking like this okay so you can see here look at the shape of these waves here if you see they are pointy so they they have a point and then they'll come up and they'll be a lot more like that So what I'm, I'm drawing there is this line that surrounds the dark area. Um, so can you see they're a lot more pointy, a lot more jagged, because 
the waves themselves are. That is the sort of the way they actually are themselves. Same here, if you look here. Uh, you'll see that they're a lot more pointy than that really big blobby roundness that you get when they're, they're a lot calmer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by doing some kind of figure of eight type lines. Some of these sort of figure of eights work really well. Um, sometimes it's going to come down sometimes they're going to be slightly amorphous. I mean what you're doing is you're looking at the water for, for hints really. And all this It's just practice. So then we're going to look at the boat. Now as we get further back, these are going to get smaller. And there is some vaguely little waves here just ever so slightly and these are going to get really small now now I'm going to go in and actually put some of these reflections in Uh, again there's a sort of slight freestyle going on there and then there's another black bit here in front isn't there so we'll put that in there okay so And then we'll do some slightly smaller, slightly smaller stuff here. And then tiny waves. And then this eventually goes back to just being sort of dots back here, really. Okay, so I don't know how well you can really see that, but. So but basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and I'm going to ink I'm going to ink some of that in. Uh, so I'm holding the pencil the pen at the end just to try and keep me super loose with that and then here and again we're back in front and we have this lovely blobby sort of shape here okay so that's the main bit in there and within that if you look there is some slightly lighter areas um, because there's a lot of light on this side of the boat and there's a blob of light in there and a 
a bit in there and a bit there right <coughs> so we've got various elements to work on here so now for this for this water here in the foreground what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of slightly connect some of these bits up here to give a sense of some waves so I'm basically going over some of the pencil that I put here before So these could actually be rounder. And then as we get back here, these are going to get a lot smaller. Again, a couple of sort of figures of eight. Some more. Now this kind of doesn't look like much at the moment. I'm not saying it will look like much in a bit, but... There is a lot of happenstance with water. It is a bit hit and miss. I mean, it sometimes it really works. Other times you're like, mm, it's not easy. But I'm hoping this will work. But again, there is no substitute for practice. Uh, and actually what I find quite, really quite hard is when you don't have a decent reference photo because sketching water in real life, as I know to my peril, is pretty hard because it, it's really hard to make it stay still. And, uh, and when it is still, it's really quite cold. <laughs> right. So anyway, there we go. So in this drawing, we have several values. We have the dark, which is the darkest, the white, which is the lightest, the light blue and the dark blue here. So we have essentially four values. Um, the water is a light blue overall because it's reflecting the sky and then you have the white so four values one two three four so obviously four is the darkest one is the lightest so one is easy because it's just white so we leave that four actually is dark so let's go from one to two so two i'm going to put some vertical lines in um, so that's Two, done, so three. Now how we make that darker is we simply cross hatch across there. Like that. And then obviously we have to do that with here. So that gives us our three value. Now Four and three are the same, so we need to make four darker. So what I'll do is I will go back across this diagonally. Like 
like that. So that's now the difference between that and that is quite a lot. The difference between that and that and that and that is quite a lot. So I think to get around that, what I might do is I might do a cross hatch on that one like that and then put another cross hatch on four and I know that's like four layers of cross hatching which is quite a lot but I want this to be nice and dark there we go so that's a bit better so we've got this one no color this one obviously just cross hatches that way this one cross hatches that way cross hatches that way and diagonal two and this one has got the full bifter, it's got four layers like that. Okay, so we're going to use the same sort of technique on this drawing here. So, this is not a fast method. You can be a lot, if you're using watercolours or using water soluble inks, what you can do now is you can go in with the brush and just and do this whole thing really super quick. But we're not going to do that. So, as we get further back, it gets softer. Um, so, number one, we're not going to do the boat. That will be one. Um, we're going to start on the water. I'm going to cross hatch between these blobs. Now, this is going to take a while. So you can talk amongst yourselves. Obviously, I might put a little bit of music on for you to listen to. I might not. So again, this technique really is a little bit... Uh, it's not set in stone. You can play, do different things with it. And it's certainly not the fastest way to draw water. But it is something quite calming about um, this sort of technique. I think it feels quite meditative. I think um, there is a million ways to, to draw water. I uh, quite enjoy trying new things, trying new techniques, just trying new approaches to stuff. And I'm always stumbling across different ways of doing the same thing. I mean, the, the other fact that is universally acknowledged is that you often get your best ideas from just stealing other people's techniques. Um, there is also a sort of argument for, with something as organic and complicated as water, there is definitely an argument for actually using mixed media. Uh, People often um, comment on the fact that I really like to draw boats. Well, when I was growing up, um, my one of my uh, my stepfather uh, owned uh, uh, a chandlery in Whitby, and uh, we uh, before then I'd never really sort of messed about on boats. And it was him who got me into boats and I actually had a little rowing boat and then a little boat with an engine and then a little boat with a sail. Uh, and 
I've always read as a kid um, sort of adventure stories and and I was quite interested with because we know Captain James Cook who is one of the finest navigators and surveyors uh, of the sort of 1700s he was from he wasn't from Whitby but he was from nearby and he was an apprentice in Whitby and he was he worked on the colliers which were the ships that took coal backwards and forwards from you know Newcastle down to London and uh, so the North Sea is not a very easy place to learn your trade it's and the colliers were very small boats that were suitable for beaching Anyway, let's not get too bogged down in James Cook and his history. But his fascinating history of his circumnavigations. Uh, obviously, now he is a controversial figure, and he does represent a sort of toxic colonial colonialism. Uh, yeah, you heard me. Um, but as a boy, reading about the places they sailed on a relatively small boat, and the the new people that they discovered <laughs> hilarious isn't it um but yeah so i do associate i do associate the ocean with adventure and freedom rather than a sort of sense of fear um and certainly growing up by the sea uh, I used to really enjoy just being on the water, and there's something about being on the water. Now, whether it's in a ferry or on a yacht or a powerboat or whatever, but there's something about being on the water where, I don't know, it's it's a sense of other. I often feel the same, you know, stood on a cliff top and you're looking out. And I don't know whether it's an edge land if that makes sense whether you're on the edge of you know when you're on a cliff and you look up to sea there is a sense of you're looking up into the night sky you know you're looking up into a void and if you jump on a boat you can become a uh, almost a space traveler and enter the void anyway yeah I love sailing, I love being on the water, and I always find it very relaxing. So we're getting there with these more cross-hatching. Okay, now, believe it or not, you can vary the weight of a fountain pen in terms of the lines and the widths. Uh, if you hold it really lightly, it will do a slightly lighter So when I get back here, I'm not going to do quite so many quite so many lines. In fact, what I might do is I'm just really is just put some sort of suggestions here. I don't need necessarily need to do them all because I want it as you get further back I want it to become a little bit softer so I'm just going to do some patches of cross hatching 
So I just want to stress again that this is not a definitive way of doing anything really. This is just, it's an exercise in cross hatching, but it's also just a one way you could do it. There is no right or wrong way. Uh, anybody who tells you that this is the way to do anything in art is kidding themselves. So there you go. So that's stage one done. So what else is dark? Well, now, the question is, how do we do these? Because these are technically darker again. Now the way I'm going to do these blobs is I'm going to do two diagonals as opposed to an upright or of a, or a um, so the, the, the light blue on the water I've done like this. Now if I was to do the whole page and not left those white, what you'd get is you'd get that but I, well, I don't want that so i'm going to do that two diagonal instead now what you'll so what you'll see is you'll see that but that is gonna be butting up against that so that is very different to that if that makes sense so anyway you'll see what i mean so i'm gonna go but start back here and i'm gonna put in some quite close together diagonal cross hatching now if I turn the pen over it gives me a slightly sharper and again you don't have to do every one So yeah, I've done, uh, I've crewed on a few little racing boats. Um, I've had a couple of my own boats. I used to have a, a really nice, my old boss used to design boats when I was an industrial designer and he had a really nice little 10 foot speed boat, uh, which I had a few adventures around Scotland on. He would do 30 knots. Uh, and in flat conditions, you could uh, obviously cover a great deal of distance on it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and I would like my own boat again, money allowing, but it's really been it's been an issue of time and storage as much as anything, because obviously you, keeping a boat on the water is very expensive. But if you could find somewhere to keep a boat, and... Um, And just put it in the water when you need it, that's the dream. Okay, so I'm going to start to get a little bit more purposeful with these cross hatches as we get to the front because I want them to be slightly darker. So I'm going to turn the pen over and that will give me a slightly thicker line. Press a tiny bit harder. This is the extra fine nib, which I find pretty a pretty good all round all round nib for the Coeco. Obviously mountain fountain pens have got flexible nibs, most of them, so you have a certain amount of control. I'm going to leave that white in the middle there, quite like that. Now, um,
cross hatching is is essentially a way to uh, to use line work to get some values. Um, the density of the cross hatching, in other words, how close the lines are, will obviously make things look darker. Uh, and as I said before, you can actually go over things several times at different angles. Of course, the darkest value would just be neat ink blocked in. <coughs> but I find if you... I'm going to leave some of this. If you uh, block in, it just looks naff. Sometimes it can look a bit heavy-handed and it just doesn't read very well. So yes, I feel like I should be filling here. I mean talking, but we haven't got long to do on this side. Do you want to know a little secret? I'm completely making this one up. I have no idea what I am doing at all. Okay. Right, so that's that. So like I said before, the contrast level between one and two, uh, that's one, but it's one at a different angle. I need some more contrast, so I have to go and put another angle on those, which, is, I mean, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Right, I'm going to have to fast forward this and put some music on because I think I've run out of chat. Sorry, guys. This is going to take forever. Right, so as I get further back here, I can start to um, be a bit faster with these and not quite so many lines just because it doesn't matter. There's less contrast in the images you get further back. Okay, so do this one. 
nice dense I'll be leaving some white areas as well uh, it's particularly in the foreground because I want to have some contrast Now, uh, as I said before, you know, this is not the fastest way of doing this. The fastest way of doing this is basically this way, where you just leave white and then put the dark ones in. This is actually doing as many layers as this is pretty time consuming. But it's good cross hatching practice, I'll tell you that for now. Okay. So we have some of that done so now we're going to start to work on the boat really um the darkness here the darkness so what we have is on the boat itself we have some shadow on this side uh that runs around there and we've got a line of that running there so we've got some shadow in here let's just put that in there like that so bearing in mind that the light is coming from this direction how what I'm going to do for that shadow is I'm going to angle it and we're going to come down like that and the same here now you may notice that I am doing instead of going from the top all the way down I'm splitting that up and doing that cross hatching on there and that cross hatching on there and that's because that they can read us two different planes a bit easier now also we have uh some cross hatching on here and that's just going to go in vertically because again i want to distinguish that from the other planes this little mean cross hatching it's not nice Right, there we go. Okay, now, I really want to try and beef up this outside line so that the boat stands out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around this. Instead of using a like a food pen or like a thick nib pen, I'm going to just show you that you can use the same fountain pen We'll actually just go around the edge a couple of times maybe working on the line a little so and then this is going to come through there now this line here this is an important line to get thick because that helps to tell the story of the boat. Uh, and again, this fender, we can thicken that up. And I'm purposely going to taper that line ever so slightly to the bottom. And again here, I'm going to put a bit of a taper in there. There we go. Right, so again, this line here really wants to be nice and thick because it's right in the foreground, effectively. Uh, I'm going to put a little knob on there just to denote the bow. It hasn't got one on, some boats do. It doesn't matter. Okay, now I could put 
some uh, shadow on these fenders but I'm not going to overcomplicate this drawing because I've done enough of that in the water <laughs> okay so we have some more shadow on the boat don't we on this side all the way down this side on the fenders and then down to here so what I'm going to do with this one is uh, I'm going to do the cross hatching in profile with the boat so what I mean is it's going to be quite straight here and then it's going to start to curve round as we get round the corner so if we start here like this And then this is going to start to straighten out. And it's going to go around the corner a bit. Try not to hit that. And then these are going to go straight like that. And that helps to tell the shape of the boat. Um, we do have a little bit of cross hatching we can put in there and we'll put that round there like that there we go and that's going to be the same okay now there is also some here so again i'm going to do that slightly and do a couple of dots and then I, the reason again I'm doing this is a separate piece and not as the whole is because I want it to read separately. So the boat's coming on there. Okay, now there is a little bit of shadow under this fender here. Uh, if you look on the drawing. So we can... Actually that should be the same angle as the up above. There we go. Right, so the next stage is to is to really work on this really dark piece here. Now I have to make sure I don't go over the rope. The rope's gonna get a bit lost there unfortunately. Right, anyway. So I'm going to start by doing some uh, verticals in the dark bits and then we're going to do some horizontals and then we diagonal. So there's four lots to do in there, it's quite a lot, but let's crack on. So we'll start with the verticals. I could have done these earlier really. Is everything still recording? This is turning into a, a really epic tutorial. So currently, over the last few years, I have been sailing at least once or twice a year on uh, my friend's race boat and uh, also, we have some other friends who have a boat in Falmouth who very kindly uh, let us use her. Uh, obviously, it's even better when we see them on board as well. That's great. Um, David is a very... Let's not talk about them. Also, we've... Uh, managed to get some friends of ours on board who have never sailed before so we've introduced a few people to sailing which is fabulous and the kids are getting their, getting their sea legs slowly my stepfather was a crew on the Wheatby lifeboat and they have many happy memories of hanging around the, uh, the lifeboat shed on exercise days and uh, that sort of thing.
Okay. So we've got here the, the white bit. Uh, I'm going to put in a little bit there around there. Sort of around the rope. Right. Uh, so this is going to have to be super, super, super dark. So that's going to take a little bit of doing. So yeah, I hope you're not too bored. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be using quite a lot of ink in this. about uh, uh, lovely things to draw. Uh, I find them very relaxing. I do find water frustrating at times. Uh, it is such a beautiful organic thing and it's so hard to, to sketch. I mean, it really is pain in the bum. Um, so that's primarily the reason why I've develop some sort of shortcuts that I think seem to work pretty well. So this horizontal cross hatching is not easy. Okay, and then this bit here, and then we're going to have to do the diagonals on those. She isn't easy. Before we had uh, kids, we did a lot of travelling by motorcycle. My uh, wife and I have been on many big trips. Uh, we've done road trips around the States and all around Europe. But motorcycles and young children are not perfect together okay so I need to go in and actually put some real darkness into this now so actually an adventure on a boat is it's a similar sort of vibe it's not particularly if it's not a big boat it definitely feels like a real adventure Now cross hatching as a technique uh, doesn't necessarily have to be neat. You can actually be a little scruffy with it and it it still looks nice. Uh, but the more you do it, 
literally the neater you will get and you'll get surprised how quickly if you do a lot of it how quickly your technique will improve Okay, so last bit of cross hatching here and then we're done. I think my original plan with this was to do quite a thorough demo, but I'll be honest, I don't think I really appreciated the time involved in all these layers of cross hatching. Otherwise, I would have done something a bit different. But it's a learning curve into all of this. And actually, in, in fairness, like an hour. Uh, however long this has been, an hour and a half, uh, isn't a huge amount of time. And it's a lovely way to spend an hour and a half, but I do feel like it's very rinse and repeat, this technique. So what I might do, just to make this even shorter, this video, <laughs> what I might do is just quickly show you, before I wrap this up completely, an alternative way to get a similar effect. Not wholly similar, but quite similar. Sort of... 75 or 60 percent of the effect with about five percent of the work so we're nearly there Put a darker line under there. Okay, so let's have a step back from that. Okay, so I think that's good as it is. I don't really want to do any more on it because it's not that I'm sick of it, but I feel like that's enough for an hour and 12 minutes. So we can see here we've got some different values. We've got uh, the lightest values. 
which is here and here and these bits these white bits and obviously quite a lot of the boat and then the next layer down is this shadow and that in the water and then the next layer down is this doubled up bit here and then the next layer down is is this darker shadow under the boat so that is pretty much how you do that um there is as i say there is a simpler ways of do of achieving the same thing and i can really quickly show you on some scrap paper because i appreciate we're in the fat end of an hour into this now so what you can do is let's take this boat and quickly draw it again uh, So we've got the bow there thus, and then the bow, so that's the bow, we've got uh, fenders, oh it doesn't matter does it, there we go, and let's put uh, the seat in at the back, it's always the case this, you do fancy drawing and then you go and do a a little daft sketch and all of a sudden you prefer the daft sketch I like the way this is going it's looking strong okay and then we've got shadow on this side uh, and then we've obviously got shadow along here I'm going to kind of speed this up. I don't mean like on film, I mean I'm just going to do it quick. Right, so there's the bow. Now, if you didn't want to do all those layers, what I would do is I would just come in here, really loosely hold the pen at the back, and I would just do something like that. Oh, we've got no rope, have we? There's the marine rope. Do a little line around there. And then we've got this, like that. And then what I would do is I would probably do something like this. Because it suggests it's a different plane. It so also suggests it's sort of horizontal. Or you could go vertical with this. And the same thing on there. Diagonal would work. It really is down to you. And do another little blob. And maybe here, a little blob. There we go. And then some of these you can but not colour in. So anyway, there's a really simple, quick version. Now, if you look at uh, if you look at this one that I did previously, there you can see how that is. I've used a diagonal for this way. That the waves get bigger as you get further forward, and as you get further back, they get smaller. And then because there's another shadow in here, what I've done is instead of Diagonally, I've gone horizontally in there, and that works quite well too. So, cross hatching, interesting technique, time consuming. Nice though. I hope you enjoy that. Um, I hope you get an idea of that. And yeah, I hope you enjoy that and uh, come back soon for more torture. <laughs> See you later. Bye bye.